Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the ancestry DNA results of a uh, ancient individual from Turkey, I-4531. Now there isn't much uh, info about this sample anywhere on the internet, I couldn't find this sample on this spreadsheet right here. So I don't really know what time period this sample is from, I don't want to research into this, uh, into this study, I don't want to do this kind of research, I don't care. Uh, to spend five hours of my time doing this. I don't... To get 500 views on YouTube, five hours of my time, I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. But uh, somebody did uh, ask me to make a video covering two samples from this study, so I will make a video covering two samples from this study. Another sample will come tomorrow. So this is I4531. Somebody asked me to make this video, and I'm going to deliver. Well... Uh, so this individual's Y DNA is R1AZ645, a very typical lineage for Europeans, and uh, this is kind of like the typical R1A. That's kind of uh, the most frequent R1A lineage. Uh, Z93 uh, and Z282 come both of both of these lineage come from Z645. Uh, for Eurogenes K13, this is what this individual scores: 33.4% West Asian, 22.9% North Atlantic, 22%. Baltic. So this individual kind of scores like a mixture of uh, Northern European and Caucasus. And this is what you see with the Oracle as well. With the Oracle, they are scoring basically like a mixture of Tabasaran or like Chechen or some kind of Dagestan or Caucasus groups plus plus Northern European. So with the mixture, you can with the mixed mode Oracle, you can see they're getting more as a mixture of Tabasaran plus North Swedish or Tabasaran plus Swedish or Finnish. It looks like the result of a Sarmatian, like a southern shifted Sarmatian. Uh, the closest populations to this individual are Tabasarans, Tajiks, Chechens. So they are closer to Tabasarans, Tajiks, Chechens, and various uh, West Asian groups than they are to Europeans. Of course, they are more West Asian than they are European. Uh, they are also scoring 6.75% South Asian. So there is a little bit of a South Asian affinity, not that much. Not enough to have a significant um, to have a significant South Asian shift. That's why they aren't all that similar to various uh, like Pashtuns or Baloj people. If they had more of a South Asian affinity, they would be closer to Pashtuns, but they aren't. And uh, they are also scoring scoring three point ninety seven percent West Mediterranean, which is uh, a little bit interesting because Sarmatians would not be scoring that much West Mediterranean. They would be scoring less or none at all. Uh, they are also scoring 1.25% Oceanian and 1.13% East Asian, which is kind of surprising as well. Once again, uh, I don't really know what to make of it, why they are scoring these East Eurasian components. I don't I don't really know. Uh, but this looks like a very southern shifted Sarmatian, based on the result that I'm seeing here. And it is surprising that this individual is, at least based on the information that I'm seeing here on ENA, is apparently from... Uh, Basarabia. What is that? What is Basarabia? Let's look it up. It looks like it's a historical region in present-day Moldova in Ukraine. Oh, so it's Basarabia. Okay, that's. I actually have ancestors from there. I I I wondered because Basarabia sounds similar to Basarabia, but I I did not want to make the make the assumption that it is it is Basarabia, because it does it's spelled differently. So I, I did not want to make the jump to to assume that it is it is Basarabia. Okay, interesting. What is Siddit? Let's look that up as well. What is Siddit? Okay, it, it, it is something else. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, whatever. I don't even know what, what that is because it is labeled Tur, but Bessarabia is not anywhere close to Turkey, so I don't know. I have no clue what where that sample is even from, so uh, this is just a mystery to me. What, what the fuck? What that is is a mystery to me. Uh, let's see what the sample scores with the ethnic calculator with my own ethnicity ethnicity tool. Let's see what that is. And with my own ethnicity tool, this sample is closest to Kafkaz, medieval Anapa, medieval individuals from Kafkaz, from Anapa. Followed by that are Bactrians from Bactria. Followed by that are medieval Afghans from Afghanistan. Followed by that are Sarmatians from the Urals. Followed by that is Saraz, Neolithic individuals from Tajikistan. Excuse me. Followed by that are Sumerians from Ukraine, Chimerians. Followed by that is Israelite. Followed by that is Pinar Basi hunter-gatherer from Anatolia. Followed by that is Erfurt Jew and Punjabi Jad. So it looks like 
with my ethnicity calculator, this individual is pretty West Asian. And the oracle says the closest mixture is Turkish plus BMAC. The second closest mixture is Assyrian plus Natufian. So yeah, this individual is very Southern with my ethnicity oracle. S definitely very Southern. Definitely very West Asian. <laughs> excuse me. Oh, excuse me. All right. So it looks like this individual is just very, very Southern with my ethnicity oracle. Uh, very West Asian in the result. All right. So we've seen what it is. Uh, let's look at their Nashakot calculator scores. Let's see what... Um, uh, they look like what what uh, traits they have in terms of physical traits. So it looks like they have brown eye color. 55% likelihood of uh, brown eyes. Definitely very, very dark eye color. For hair color, dark brown hair color. Uh, for skin color, olive or Mediterranean skin tone. For hair texture, it looks like they actually have kinky hair texture. Definitely very interesting. But uh, for, the, for the hair texture, the prediction is not very precise. Like there is... Um, you can see there's 13% likelihood of straight hair even. So it's not like 0% uh, likelihood of straight hair, 40% likelihood of kinky hair. There is 13% uh, likelihood of straight hair as well. Like there is, It's not a very precise prediction because it's not a very high quality file. right? So there's a large, large percentage likelihood of straight hair as well. Uh, that is because there is simply not a lot of data in the file. So uh, with a higher quality precision, you will get you will get much larger divergence in the result. You will get like 80% kinky, 0% straight, and that's a high quality predict prediction. But if you get like 43% kinky, 13% straight, it's less of a high, it's a lesser quality prediction. And that's the same, it's the same principle for all of these results. For, um, for the traits, looks like they don't have BH3, no BH2, and they actually have heterozygous gene type for BH4. Very interesting. They don't have any light color variants in MC1R. Uh, no predisposition to being ginger. Very, very interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see what do they have. What do they score for the phenotype oracle? Let's see what they score for that. So it looks like the closest phenotype is this. Kind of like a uh, alpinid, al alpino, alpino, pheno alpino <laughs> phenotype. Followed by this. Um, okay. Followed by this. Very, very interesting. And for the phenotype oracle, it looks like the closest mixture is 50% that plus 50% that. Uh, the second closest mixture is 50% that plus 50% that. I think the difference is, it, is that on the bottom here, the corded phenotype is a little bit darker. They have brown eyes here or like amber eyes here. But here they got green eyes. That's the difference. It's a subtle difference, but you can spot it if you, uh, if you made the phenotypes yourself like I did. Okay, <laughs> if you can spot them if you made the phenotypes yourself, that sounds funny. Yeah, so I I made the phenotypes myself, so I know the difference. <laughs> yeah, let's see the biomarkers. Um, so the biomarkers looks like um, he's got a above average level of vitamin D. He's got a above average level of LDL cholesterol, which is definitely not good. You don't want to have above average level of that. He's got a above average level of HDL, which is kind of okay. Um, he's got a below average level of glucose, unfortunate. Actually, that's that's good. You want to have below average level of that. That's pretty good. Uh, above average level of hemoglobin. Uh, above average blood pressure, good. Below average level of iron. Uh, below average level of sex hormone, hormone binding globulin. Below average level of red blood, blood cell count in blood. Good stuff. Let's see the polygenic risk scores right now. And it looks like they got a slightly above average level um, odds for epilepsy. Typical stuff. Slightly above average odds for asthma. High odds for leukemia. Very interesting. Uh, slightly above average for, for vitiligo. Slightly above average for myopia. Uh, slightly below average for primary biliary cirrhosis. Slightly below average for stroke. Um, above average for male pattern hair loss. And uh, that is also going to be higher if you're a European. Uh, slightly below average for atrial fibrillation, slightly below average for deep vein thrombosis, very low for bipolar type 1. Okay, very low for schizophrenia. Uh, above average for diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Below average for Alzheimer's. Uh, below average for multiple sclerosis. Two risk variants for breast cancer out of 10, pretty typical. 14 risk variants for testicular cancer out of 16, very, very wow, that's crazy. So the testicular cancer risk score is crazy here. 
That's actually in incredible. That's incredible. One risk variant for celiac disease out of eight. It looks like uh, the risk variant is here. It's actually printing the risk variant in R262W. Very interesting. No risk variants for GSS. Really good to see. Four risk variants for Crohn's out of 18. And uh, the, the risk variants are in these two variations. It looks like they got two risk variants in both of them. In both of these two variations. Very interesting. Uh, no risk variants in Raffenstein's and nothing was found and no risk variants for Parkinson's out of 18. Really good to see. So we could actually just right now look, look up those variations for Crohn's that they scored and, uh, see if those matter that much. But let's look them up and we already know they have, okay, that's kind of bad. That does not look good. Let's see the other one. Let's see the other one. And we know they have homozygous genotype there for, for the bad allele. Yeah, that does not look good at all. That does not look good at all. Okay, so that does not look good whatsoever. So we know they got a um, bad genotype for Crohn's. Uh, bad um, risk score for Crohn's. I think it was also for Alzheimer's. For diabetes. And for uh, leukemia, that's what they have to watch out for. So when it comes to COMT and MAOA, the warrior genus, genes, it looks like they have a warrior genotype. A warrior and MAOA, intermediate genotype in COMT. Overall, they're probably more warrior. Uh, they have less of the do dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Uh, they have... Um, what else? What else? Looks like they don't have... Um, yeah, they have short form 5 HTLPR. So slightly increased risk of depression. Uh, lower odds of autism. Very interesting. No dwarfism, not a dwarf. Uh, looks like they have average level of empathy. Predisposition to actually average or lower level of, em of empathy. Interesting. So average or lower em level of empathy. Um, looks like... I'm, I'm just going to skip everything that's not like interactive. I'm, I'm only going to focus on the interactive parts. Looks like they got slightly higher, higher, higher odds of cardiovascular issues. Definitely very interesting stuff here. Uh, for the facial morphology panel, looks like they actually have heterozygous gene type in EDAR. Very, very interesting. So they have heterozygous gene type in EDAR. That's definitely quite unusual for somebody from Turkey. And for somebody who only scores, how much do they score East Asian? They score 1% East Asian, 1% Oceanian, 3% Amerindian, and 4% Siberian. So in total, they score, um, what is it, 8, 10. They score 10% East Asian in total. I, I guess 10% East Eurasian in total, it's okay. They score, so for somebody who scores 10% East Eurasian in total, I guess I can understand how they have uh, heterozygous gene type in EDAR, but it's still kind of interesting. So they have heterozygous gene type in EDAR somehow. Uh, and smaller nose size, slightly thinner eyebrows, higher odds of protruding nasal bridge. Longer mid face length, definitely very interesting. Uh, I want to see the oh wow, heterozygous gene type here carries micro penis mutation. Wow, I say don't voices in the mid in the video. That's like a relic from the past. Back then when I when I first had it in my um in 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 the format of a, a web app, I uh, I thought that voicing this topic in the video would get me demonetized. So I decided to add this. I add this little disclaimer before this part not to voice in the video but now i know i can just say it and i'm not gonna face any repercussions for that okay uh what's interesting about the sample is he scored he got this here which means he has a heterozygous genotype in edar but for this variation he's got typical european genotype so uh he's only carrying the east asian allele in one variation not the other okay um He's got, uh, is there anything else I want to talk about here? Alcoholism panel. He's got slightly below average odds of alcoholism. For cancer's risk section, looks like he's, he's got all the genotypes that predispose to higher odds of testicular cancer. Very, very, very unfortunate. So he's definitely got to watch out for testicular cancer. For leukemia panel, he's got all the genotypes that predispose to higher odds of leukemia. Definitely very unfortunate. Definitely have to watch out for that. Um... Higher odds of boldness in the antigen receptor gene panel. For HLA gene panel, looks like he's got lower odds of autoimmune disease. That's very, very cool. So he's got predisposition to lower odds of autoimmune disease. 
For colorblindness panel, looks like he's not colorblind. Zero risk variance on OP and one SW. For FTO gene panel, uh, looks like nothing relevant was found for that. Actually, for a syncopy based on free SNPs, he's got slightly above average odds for syncopy. For bio trades panel, he's got one copy of the hunter gatherer CLD CL1 gene variant and one copy of the farmer variant. Uh, intermediate ability to process carbs and sugars, he's got normal, smellier body odor. That's a, another of the typical non-East Asian facial trait, non-East non Asian uh, body traits. Where if you're an East Asian, you're gonna you're gonna have the non-smelly body odor, but if you're like a typical um, typical non-East Asian person, you're gonna have the smelly body odor. So he's the non-East Asian type where he's got smelly, typical body odor. Uh, and for blood group panel, let's see what is his predicted blood type. His predicted blood type is actually type B. But it's kind of clustered. It could be type A or type O as well. It's just, uh, the prediction is that it's not type AB. Type AB is sort of out of the picture here. But it could be type B, it could be type A, it could be type O. Let's zoom in actually. Maybe you guys can't see. I'm really worried that you can't see it that well. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. So you can see that for the type O prediction, it's 20.7345. Yeah. For type A, it's 29%. For type B, it's 49%. So it's most likely type B. His blood type is most likely type B. Then it's type A. Then it's type O. And it's definitely not type AB, but it could be it could be type B, type A, or type O. Most it's it's most likely type B, but it could be A or O as well. Uh, it looks like in this file there is not enough data to really determine it more precisely, but it's most likely type B. That's all I can say uh, about this about the data that's here. Well, thanks for watching until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I um, also want to say that you can download this file from the link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye.